sweet spirit. seated. Good to be in the Lord's house this morning. Amen. Amen. Good to see all of you here. I told Gerald this morning I, I wanted to, like the boxers do, get some walkout music. Uh, when I get to come back, I'm going to come down the aisle strutting, you know. Here comes the boom. Amen. Uh, but anyway, it's good to see you here this morning. Thank you all for your prayers and, and uh, everything for us these last couple weeks. We have had food brought to the house. Matter of fact, I'm feeling a little sick still if y'all want to keep that going another couple weeks. <laughs> come up with something. Uh, no, we've done good. We, y'all been so good to us and your prayers and everybody's kept up with us and we can't thank you enough uh, for everything that you've done for us. And we are we are back. Uh, we're good. Everything's well. Bible says greet the brother with a holy kiss, so I'll catch y'all at the door on the way out. And, uh, no, but <laughs> anyway, no, I, I understand anybody wants to steer clear, but we're, we're in the good and thankful for it and uh, praying for some folks. Man, that, that deal we got into, it was, a, it was a revival service. And out of that revival service, they've had over 40 cases. Uh, that came from that group. So you talk about a super spreader. That was a, that was one of them. But uh, we were very fortunate to have mild symptoms, and, and the Lord took care of us. And of course, with so many folks loving on us, praying for us, I don't know how we could have done any, anything else. So, thank you for that. Uh, I told the group this morning, and I don't know if they if they would say that that's how it went or not. But we used to coon hunt. Uh, we would we would go and hunt two three nights a week, and we'd call it getting the dog tuned up. When you got him tuned up, you could go every night, and that dog would be something. He'd go and do his thing. But if you laid him up for a couple months, a lot of times in the summertime, he'd get hot and we'd quit hunting. You lay him up for a couple months, you'd take him back out. He'd run armadillo, he'd tree a possum. It'd take him a while to get tuned back up. So if I run a few armadillos this morning or tree a possum or two, <laughs> y'all bear with me. I'm getting tuned back up and we're going to be good to go. But anyway, Lord's good. That group this morning really enjoyed that joke. Uh, <laughs> not a lot of coon hunters in the 1030 service. Amen. 
Uh, men's Bible studies on Tuesday nights at 6.30. They will be having Bible study this Tuesday night at 6.30. It'll be in the sanctuary here or either back here in Miss Kay's class. Uh, but they are going to have Bible study for the men's group. And uh, the election, of course, will be taking place. They'll be voting in the fellowship hall. Uh, but we're going to have that going on Tuesday night at 6.30. It's been a good study, a uh, good group of guys, and the Lord's really blessed them there. It's a tremendous study. So if you can come be a part of it, uh, it'd be a blessing to have you. Uh, very thankful for that. Children's Church starts back this morning. Look at this group down here. Uh, so any kids that are want, want to be a part of Children's Church, you come on. We are back with a vengeance. We've got Children's Church rocking and rolling. So thankful for that. Uh, and anybody wants to send their kid to Children's Church right after this service, whenever you see this group, get up and go. Song service, uh, you can send them right along. Uh, also, anybody that wants to help with Children's Church, please uh, let us know. Uh, and as many as we can get on rotation, the better it'll be for everybody. So pray about it. If you'd like to come help, uh, we'd love you to be a part. Also, we want to thank everybody who had a part in Trunk or Treat. Uh, looked like a great success. Uh, I was sitting in the yard crying, just watching, waving to people. <laughs> uh, anyway, but I, I appreciate everybody that had a part in it. It was a great success and, and something we're going to try to incorporate uh, with our fall activities. So we're very thankful for that. And the great response, the great turnout, and all that donated candy, did gains, and brought your family to be a part of, you made it a, a real great event. So we're thankful for that. I want to thank Miss Ann, too, for her leadership and helping put all that together. She had a lot of help, and it was all dependent on everybody else, but... Uh, uh, that was something she came up with, and, and the Lord really blessed it. So we're thankful for that. Uh, let me see. Also, uh, we are praying about our Wednesday night children's programs. Pray with us about that. If it's something you'd like to get involved with, uh, you can let us know. Uh, and I know the Lord will bless you for that as well. All right. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Is there anything else before we pray? Any other announcements? Yes, sir. Praying about that. Yes, sir. You wrote a song about Jesus? You bet we can sing it. How do you, how do you, where's it at? Okay, why don't you bring it next week? You do that? We'll sing it. Man wrote a song about Jesus. You doggone right, we're gonna sing it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm excited about that. We're going to do that. I might write me one. Boy, oh, he looked at me. <laughs> no, we'll go, we'll go with yours. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff right there. Let that be a precedent. <laughs> Amen. All right. Anybody else got anything? That was, that's going pretty good so far. <laughs> You're serious? He said, I'm so serious, Brother Ruben. Hey, buddy, I'm serious, too. I'm serious, too. <laughs> that's great. Amen. All right, let's, let's pray. Has anybody else got anything before we do? Get on with the program. That's a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Father, we love you. We thank you today, Lord, that you love us. You've been good to us, Lord. I thank you for the privilege we have to be at church today, and we pray that you'd use this service to honor and glorify yourself. Just magnify your name in this place. I thank you for this young man, for the burden you gave him uh, to write us some words about Jesus, and Lord, I pray that you'd help him to just, uh, just bring honor and glory to yourself as you move. Uh, Lord, in his life and in the lives of many others, Lord, we look forward to that. God, we do pray for this youth conference and for their safe travel, and Lord, for, for a wonderful experience in Christ as they go uh, to be a part of that. And Lord, we pray today that you'd bless the service. Thank you for what you did in the early service. We pray, uh, Lord, for a double portion here as we meet uh, in this group, in this capacity. We thank you for what you're doing in our church. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your faithfulness. And we pray, uh, Lord, for our church, for our country. Uh, Lord, for everything that's going on, we pray that your will be done, your name be magnified. Lord, that Jesus Christ uh, reigns supreme in each of our lives. And Lord, we pray, uh, God, that your will be done. And we're going to thank you for it. Lord, have your way today, and we'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, let's sing page number 15. Come now, fountain of every
us sing this so the people out there on Facebook and YouTube and all that know that we got a house full in here, all right? Yeah. Let's sing, Great Are You, Lord. supposed to lead the congregation in worship and 
How many times have we sang a song like God Bless America and Jesus Loves Me? Which song do you sing louder? So many times we can say something about, I've even heard Brother Reuben say quotes like, we live in the greatest country on earth. And the whole congregation will say amen. But when we say that there was somebody that came to earth and died for us and rose again is coming back one day, only a few of us will amen that. It was just, just convicting to my heart this morning because I'm, I'm just like everybody else. I'll just sit there and, and go out and do what I do. I'm about as patriotic as, as anybody in here. I love everything that this flag stands for, but that flag pales in comparison to what that flag stands for. Amen. We're not slaves anymore. We shouldn't live in fear. And uh, I want y'all to have me sing this this morning.
good stuff. Amen. Here comes trouble. <laughs> Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, we're going to have two passages of Scripture that we'll look at. In Psalm 33, if you'd like to open there, that's where we're going to read a verse, and then we're going to Jeremiah chapter 4. And of course, it'll be on the screen for you uh, in the event that you can't turn from one to the other before we get started there. Um, I want to say thank you to Brother David for filling in for us and helping out on Wednesdays and last Sunday, or Sunday before last. He already had an appointment uh, to preach last week, and so Brother Jerry Wayne Hendrickson and his, his daughter came and sang and preached and did an outstanding job. Uh, we're very thankful for their help and how they blessed our church. Uh, we, we've been very fortunate as a people, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, I called Brother David the night before uh, his Sunday about 4.30, and he and Miss Sherry were in town. Uh, and I said, are you still preaching for me Wednesday? I was going to be in revival. And he said, yeah. And I said, have you got your sermon ready? And he said, not yet. I said, well, I was hoping if you did, you could use it tomorrow. And I'm going to be out. He's like, you're kidding. They're like, no, you're up. <laughs> and, uh, and boy, God used us. Amen. Amen. Y'all stand with me as you will. Psalms 33, uh, verse 12, and then we're going to turn to Jeremiah 4. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Jeremiah 4 1. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me, and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove, or shall not be removed, you might say. And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth, in truth, in judgment, and in righteousness. And the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. I, I want to preach a message to you this morning from the word of God with no intention to offend, but to do my best to preach what I know God's laid on my heart. As we look at these passages of scripture, it would be a message titled, Make America Great Again. Father, we ask you this morning... In the name above every name, help us to do what you've called us to do. Help us to hear and receive your word, that your will might be done in this service. Do what only you can, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. In our country, we have abounding hatred, strife that's been stirred by confusion, sown by the seed of an enemy that we have fought for many years. And at one time we called it by name communism. Communism was an enemy to freedom. It was an enemy to America. It was an enemy to everything that we stood for as a people. In the years or decades since, communism has taken many forms. As you'll find, communism was originally birthed through Darwinism. Darwinism to Marxism. Marxism to communism, communism to socialism, and as we see in our country, from socialism to liberalism. They all lead to the same place. Slavery, emotional bondage, um, a, a, a blanket of authority over every detail of your life. That's the direction that many in our country would like to see us go. Many in our country today don't understand freedom because they've never experienced a fight for freedom. We've just inherited so many blessings. 21st century liberalism. And I'm telling you in light of it, we need now more than ever to stand unapologetically for fundamental, godly, Christian Americanism in our nation once again. Amen. To stand for the things of God. Christian patriotism has been the driving force of this country and it's our only hope in 2020. It's for God's people to understand that what we've got did not fall out of the sky. Amen. What we have as a country today is not something that we just happened into. We didn't barbarically overthrow a land to take what we've got, but God has shed his grace on us. We enjoy the benefits of a nation that's been founded in faith, baptized in blood, and thoroughly dedicated to the worship of the Almighty God. We'll find in our history that the only reason that we're here is because a group of people did not want to be controlled. A group of people did not want to be governed by a state church, but they wanted freedom to worship. A separation 
of church and state. And that was never to get the church out of the state, but it was to get the state out of the church Amen. so that we could have freedom to operate autonomously as a body and to preach this book as God's called us to do. May we regain ownership in this nation for this blessed land as citizens of this country gaining an accountability for our actions with the intent to repent of our sin and be restored of our wrongdoings and a personal desire to expect nothing from this nation under God that we don't expect from ourselves in God. One of the most hypocritical things that we do today is we say we want things for our nation that we're not willing to pursue for ourselves. We want things to govern our land that we don't want to govern our homes. And that's the Word of God. If you want the Word of God to mean something in this country, it's got to mean something in your home. It's got to mean something in this church. It's got to mean something in our communities. And I believe with all my heart to make America great again. It's going to take a revival in the spirit and the heart of the people of God to get back to this book. Not just for the value of knowledge, but for the value of application. To hear it, to know it, to believe it, to apply it, and to obey it. And I believe if God's people will lead the charge, turning from sin and running back to Jesus, that this country can be great again. For it was never an ideology or a governmental system that made this country great. But what's brought greatness into this country is the favor of Almighty God as He smiled upon a people who would not be denied the right to worship Him freely. And I pray again that we would run to this truth and to this hope. Three things this morning on my heart as we consider the verses we read that I pray will be a blessing to you as we consider this thought. Of course, you know that I borrowed from our president. Number one, to make our country great again, we need a greater sense of gratitude in America. A greater sense of appreciation, a greater sense of thankfulness. Our nation was conceived in the noble hearts of courageous and righteous men. Our nation was born on the backs of those who were willing to fight and to bleed and to die. We stand today free over 200 years later because somebody said we saw something that we wanted to provide for somebody else. That they were willing to go the task and give their lives so that people they would never know, people they would never meet, could enjoy a dream of freedom that they themselves would never enjoy. We stand today the beneficiary of a country that has long served this world as a lighthouse and a hub for all other nations. When they're in trouble, who do they call? Not China, not Russia, not Mexico. They don't call uh, 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 Italy. They don't call France. They don't call Europe. They don't call London, England. They call the United States of America because they know we'll come. We're the only country in the world that'll bomb your brains out and then spend our own money to restore your nation and make it look better than it did before we got there. Amen. We're here to serve this world. And as we have done so, God has blessed us. He's given us what we've stood in need of. We've been born in the throes of holy prayer, cradled by the strong hand of faith, nourished at the bosom of living, vital, sincere, genuine faith that brought us into the prominence and favor and the approval of Almighty God. Freedom is a virtue that we have long forgotten. It's something that we waved goodbye to. And we see now a people who are content with complacency. A, a people who are more than happy to hand the reins of their freedom to somebody else. We were not birthed by fearful men, but we were brought about by people who were courageous enough to stand and to fight the oppression that would be brought on by government. And we stand today a people who enjoy the privilege of those who have fought and died for us to give us a freedom that it seems millions in our land are willing to hand back. We find ourselves in this day where we see the sprinkling of socialism, even though they don't want to use that word anymore because they've been exposed. And so now liberalism is the term that they use, that it's a liberal thought to be able to hand the reins over to the government and let them run our business. And I'm telling you today, nothing is further from the truth. If it were so, men would not have fought and died to give us what we've got to get away from such corruption. We're not thankful for some things because we don't realize how we got them. Freedom is something that all of us in this room have enjoyed since the day that we were born. 
We were born into a country that gave us freedom. We were born into a country that when we were, when we were babies, they told us what they tell us the American dream was is that you can do anything you want to do. That we were given a dream and handed a privilege that told us that if we worked hard, and if we tried and we were responsible, compassionate adults that we could do anything we wanted to do, soar as high as we wanted to soar, we could accomplish anything we wanted to accomplish. And there are many of you in here today who have been blessed by the opportunities you were given just because of the piece of dirt that you were born onto. We need to run to the altars of praise and sacrifice and worship our God because of how good he's been. Our worship and our praise and our service to God is all rooted in our gratitude. This has happened in the church. We have forgotten what it costs to save us. We've forgotten what it costs to get us out of hell and into heaven. We've forgotten what it costs to earn us the privilege to be able to come and sit. I'll never forget my papa. One time we went to church and they had a padded pew and he talked about it all the way home. About a padded pew. We got padded pews and carpet and, and, and lights and bells and whistles and everything under the sun. These beautiful instruments, the talented people who play them. We're broadcasting from sea to shining sea on the Facebook. That we've got all of these things that we've been blessed with that almost seem like entitlements. And the people it seems in our country that are given the most, you would think somebody that got a check to sit at home and not work would be walking up and down the street praising this country for loving them and helping them. And yet it seems the ones that have the pacifier deepest in their mouth are the ones that gripe the most Amen. when something comes unraveled. Amen. And it has crept across this land. It has crept into the church. It's crept into our community. And we've seen what we see as an attitude of ungratefulness, an attitude of I'm not thankful for anything. When we look outside at that sun shining, that blue sky, that grass growing, birds chirping, acorns and leaves turning and falling, we're reminded of the faithfulness of God. Amen. Do you know that big ball of gas up there that's burning bright that we call the sun that'll turn you red as Ross's shirt if you go out in the summertime? <laughs> That it's been there since God put it there doing its job. And if it wasn't for what it did, everything that we know would be unexisting. But because of the faithfulness of just one little star that God put in the heaven and gave dominion over the light and let it rule the light of the day and the moon to reflect its light and rule the night. Listen to me, because of that one little iota of the faithfulness of God, we have everything that we have in this world. Amen. We ought to just be thankful. I used to sing songs and... You'd see old timers get teary eyed. We'd sing songs like, thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me because I've got food on my table. I've got shoes on my feet. I've got a roof over my head. I've got plenty to eat. Little things like that. They don't touch our heart when we sing like that because very few, if any, in this room today have ever wondered where their next meal is coming from. We live in a country that has afforded us liberty. And I'm going to tell you right now, that government cheese is the best cheese I've ever put in my mouth. You never ate a grilled cheese sandwich in this world. If somebody gives you a block of it, get it, and it's like a ribeye. Get it and take it home, put it on everything. I love that stuff. I don't know how they do it or how they pour it in that little plastic package that you have to cut it out of. Whoo, thank God for government cheese. Anybody in the house this morning, now I don't get to receive it. I'm thankful that I don't have to have it. But every now and then somebody gets it, don't need it. They'll slide old preacher box of cheese, and I'm going to tell you right now, I can hang with it. Amen. We live in a country, if you're hungry, you'll get fed. You need a place to stay. It might not be nice, but somebody will put a roof over you. People will help you. People will love you. You can sit on the side of the road with a sign and people will stop and give you money. I mean, it's really, it's an incredible place that we live. And I pray that we would have a revival of thankfulness in our country. A sleeping church has given way to an enemy that's crept in in the watches of the night and strode a terrible seed among the living. And today we're seeing that seed come to the harvest and it's going to be a devastating outcome unless God intervene. Amen. We find ourselves in this place, a nation that was birthed by faith, yet we're losing it by forfeit. We're giving up our right. And gratitude being the driving force of our worship and service to God as we forfeited our freedom to worship God and to follow Christ and to rear our families in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, we have waved goodbye to a generation. God blessed this country with more than we could ever imagine. The natural resources that this country has given. Our agriculture, our... It, it, you look at the beauty. Has there ever been a more diverse landscape? 
from deserts to oceans to prairies to plains to mountains to swamps to bayous to the hill country. It's incredible that God has given us. And what Jed, uh, 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 what did he call a bubbling crude? <laughs> to be able to take it out of the ground, put part of it in the motor, part of it in the gas tank. I don't know how it all works, but I turn the key and the thing goes broom and down the road we go. Amen? Amen. I mean, we've just been blessed. You go outside and look up in the sky, I guarantee you after the service there will be a big white streak across the sky of an airplane filled with people going from one destination to the other. You can literally go around the world. We live in the most incredible days with the most incredible resources and the most incredible technology that we could ever imagine and yet it seems with all that we've got, with everything we've been given that we're so unthankful and so ungrateful. We've closed our churches while opening bars, casinos, opening venues across the land for entertainment. I heard of a guy one time that had a burden and a desire to start a church in a town, and when he went to plant the church, there were restaurants in this growing town that were starting, there were entertainment activities, theaters being open, and they went to start a church, and he got letters from people in other churches telling him that they were going to do everything they could to see his church fail. They didn't want to see the church start. They didn't want to see them buy property. They didn't want to see them procure a place to be able to meet and to worship. There used to be a time that God's people were excited to see God's people prosper, to see God's people be blessed. We were thankful. In a town, if another church was starting, churches in that town would help them. They'd financially support them. They'd go help them erect their building. They would do things to be a blessing to them. And this guy heard from a deacon in one of those churches that their last thing they needed in that town was another church. And I say, if it takes one more church to win one more soul, then let's put a church on every corner. Amen. The reality is, I've heard people say my entire ministry that we've got too many churches in Union Parish, but I'll tell you this, we still don't have enough churches to seat all the people if everybody show up on Sunday. Amen. There's room. We need the Lord. Whatever it takes, we need the Lord. But we've got to re be thankful for what God has done for us and establish that gratitude in our heart. Not only do we need a greater sense of gratitude, but we need a greater consciousness of our responsibility to this country. Our responsibility to this land. One said one time that smugness is the forerunner of indifference, and indifference is the predecessor of national deterioration. In the history of this entire world, hear old preacher this morning, in the history of the world, without one exception, there has never been a nation that has survived a moral collapse. Did you hear me? Never been a nation that survived a moral collapse. The American dream became the American nightmare when it became more about satisfaction than it did about the Savior. When it became more about pride than it did about patriotism. Let me tell you something. You can put a flag in your yard. You can put a bumper sticker that says, I love Jesus on your truck. You can wear a t-shirt that says, world's greatest dad. But none of it means anything if it's not true on the inside. We can wave our banners, we can celebrate our pride all day long, but if we don't love our country enough to return to the Word of God and obey and repent of our sin, then we don't care about this country none whatsoever. Amen. We can call ourselves what we want to. We go, we, we, we've learned how to put out signs, we've learned how to celebrate symbolism, but we've learned how in the middle of all of it to be what Jesus called a group of Pharisees. You look like sheep, but inside you're ravening wolves. That's where we find ourselves in this country. Our responsibility is for us to understand that this is not a destination. This is a journey. And our duty is to be sure that we take what was given to us from past generations, improve upon it, and give it to the next crowd better than how we got it, and hope that they do the same. That the perpetual nature of this country, of this dream, of this ideology, of this nation, of this church is that we receive the blessing God has given us and we pass it on and we stand for the things of God. And no matter whether it be foreign or domestic, <coughs> we stand against those that come to try to take away from the bulwarks and the foundational truth. You could find years ago in the list of priorities of those who inhabited this land that their number one priority in this life was their relationship with God. Number two was immediately, everyone would say their family. And number three was their country. I fear that in 2020 that many people wouldn't have country in their top 10. We have forgotten songs we used to sing that this land is your land. This land is my land. That we have an ownership and we have a responsibility 
to take what God has given us and to treat it as if it were our own, to invest in it, to engage in it, and to do all that we can to see God do. Yet we find ourselves in this day where it's our job to improve life and hand it to this next generation to be a blessing, to try to be a blessing to them. It seems like now we'd rather, as a generation of adults, we'd rather creep around in the shadows of this life and do what we know is wrong and corrupt our children and corrupt our homes and corrupt our families. Kids don't know who to follow. Kids don't know who to trust. Mamas used to weep and pray for their drunken children. Now they buy the beer and throw the party for them. We're raising a generation of alcoholics in Union Parish. We got mamas and daddies buying booze and parading around having parties. And these kids are going and drinking and carrying on and having a good time. Old preacher hears about a lot of stuff. We have a responsibility to be conscious of what we're doing for this next generation in this country if we want to make America great again. What we're experiencing politically in this country is not our problem. It's the fruit of our problem. It's the product of our problem. When we elected to elevate sin and self and choose to dismiss God's favor and invite his judgment on our land, here's where our trouble starts. You want to taste the communism? You want to taste the socialism? You want to taste the liberalism? You want to taste of somebody telling you what to do? Barack Obama passed a federal mandate during his administration that made every state in this country, every parish, every county, and every state have to, have to perform same-sex marriages. I do a wedding now in the place that used to say husband and bride now says spouse. So far that they came all the way to the clerk of court in Union Parish and made our people <coughs> perform same-sex marriages. When our parish was against it, our state was against it, our region was against it, but we were forced by the federal government yes. to participate in sin. They took the reins, and here we are. And my greatest fear in this election is not that one man gets it and another man doesn't. My greatest fear in this 2020 is that God has let us go so far in our sin, unrepent, that he's going to take his hand off this country and let us fight it out for ourselves. Amen. You want to make America great again, you can. But it won't be by a vote, it'll be by our virtue. It'll be by our deciding and our understanding that our job and our duty in this country as citizens of this country is to fear God and keep His commandment. Is to do what the Holy Book tells us to do. We need gratitude, appreciation, and thankfulness for what we've been given. We need a consciousness of our responsibility to pour something into this next generation besides store-bought booze. Forty-year-old people can't keep their britches zipped. Be quiet on me now. Shout me down while I'm preaching good. You know what happens when them old deer get in rut? They start chasing. They get shot or they get run over. Now the good news is deer only come in rut for about two weeks every year. These suckers around here is in, in rut 365 days a year. Chasing. In the shadows of social media. Sending inbox messages to a married man's wife. I'm going to tell you right now. One morning, and I'm done. I won't say it again. You send my wife some of these messages some of these guys are sending. I'll kill you. Come on. Come on. Did we record that? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's wrong with some of our marriages. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with some of this stuff. Is we've got women who have to live their lives with a man that's so sorry that he wouldn't lift a finger for them, let alone fight for them. But I'm going to tell you what, hand, you might come get mine, but it's going to be through blood. You're going to fight for mine. because I, I wasn't raised right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I wasn't raised right. I'll fight you right now. You drop a hat, buddy. I'll be on you before it hits the ground. I promise you, you mess with my wife. Watch what happens. I don't know what's wrong with some of these suckers. Let a man just come in, take his wife, and he just, I don't know what to do. Get off your rear end, go whoop his tail. That's what y'all do. That's what's wrong with these guys. If they got their nose busted every time they sent a message to somebody's wife, they'd stop sending the dead gum messages. Amen. 
We've raised a generation of cowards crawling around scared to death to fight for what's theirs. I came from a group that'd rather get my tail whooped than somebody disrespect me and take what's mine. I'll take a whooping before I let you, because I promise you one thing. You might whoop me, but you'll think twice about jumping on me again. That came out, and it shouldn't have, but it did. Amen? Amen. But that same mentality is what's taking place in our country is we forgot how to fight for what's ours because we forgot about those who fought for it. And I'm not telling you who to vote for, and I'm not telling you what you ought to do or what you ought not do, but I'm saying that we have to regain a sense of responsibility over what's been given to us. This is not just some bonus session. This is not just some YOLO, live it once, enjoy all you can, do all you got. This is generational stuff that we have to engage in or we lose everything for our kids and grandkids. Amen. That boy wants to sing about Jesus next Sunday. I hope we get the chance to. Amen. Thirdly, last of all, have I treated an armadillo? Do you treat armadillos? Whatever it is. <laughs> we need a greater and higher and more sincere faith in God. Listen to what the Bible says. Proverbs 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Any good that's ever come to this country is owed to the underlying faith in God. Abraham Lincoln famously said one time that the important thing is not that we have God on our side. The important thing is that we make sure we're on his side. Amen. We need to, in this sense of gratitude, in this sense of responsibility, we need to labor to have a greater and more sincere faith in God. Listen, I'm not here today to tell you who to vote for. But I am here today to tell you that we have to consider our convictions. And we have to consider the Word of God. And in the administration of President Donald Trump, we have seen dozens of judges across our land who hold traditional, conservative, Christian values. Not to mention three who he has put on our Supreme Court who hold those same values in their heart and confess the Lord Jesus as their Savior. And Joe Biden has threatened, or let me say this, he's been too scared to threaten, but too bold to deny that him and Kamala Harris have a plan, if they get in office, to stack the court, to create new states, and to overthrow the powers that be that have been set up under the traditional government of the United States of America. They want to change everything so that they can reroute history and change our country once and for all. I'm not telling you who to vote for, but I'll tell you who you better not vote for. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. And I'll tell you who I'm going to vote for. I'm going to vote for President Donald Trump. Amen. Because I believe not that he is the greatest man in all the world. I don't believe that he's the most fascinating human being that ever lived. I actually think some have bordered on idolatry with their allegiance to Donald Trump. But here's what I do believe. I believe that of the two, he is by far the greatest opportunity that gives us the privilege to keep doing what God's called us to do to the greatest capacity. Because I have news for you. The liberals are coming for this book. Liberals are coming for our freedom. They're coming for your guns. And your guns were given to you in the Second Amendment to protect your First Amendment, which is the freedom to stand in the public square and declare the Word of God without apology. They're coming for this. We need... <laughs> we need God. We need God. Amen. If we want a great nation, it's going to take more than a vote. You need to vote. And you need to vote right. But that vote's not going to fix it. That vote's not going to get anything going the right direction. It's not going to keep anything going the right direction. You've got to do right. We got to get right with God. We got to repent of our sin. We got to restore our marriages. I read a statistic this week that said 90% of people who were unhappy in their marriage and chose to stay five years later were happier than they'd ever been. Hang in there. Your kids need you, your family needs you. 
You want to make America great again? You can. It's going to take more than pushing a button to them. Go push that button to them. Amen? Amen. But you get on your knees. You repent of your sin. You get right with a holy God and you go do what God has told you to do. And I'll say this. If you're still torn about who to vote for, here's my deciding factor. I go with the one that will kill the least babies. People say, well, what about the rights of a woman? Women have rights. So do those babies. And women can fight for themselves. I found out they're pretty good at it. Nobody speaks for those babies. Except the Bible. Who says God hates hands that shed innocent blood. And there's not a more innocent soul in this world than a baby. God spoke to Jeremiah in his mama's womb. John the Baptist was touched with the Holy Ghost and left in his mother's womb. The abortion doctors and nurses say that the babies have the capacity to feel when the syringe is stabbed into their spinal cord. They've seen them on ultrasound while they went to draw the baby, they call a fetus, <coughs> out of the mother's womb. The baby would wince in pain and jump and go. And you have on the Democratic ticket two that believe it's all right right up to the ninth month. I also read in 2019 there were 25 abortions by people in Union Parish. And I want you to know that you're not the enemy. I want you to know if you've had an abortion, we love you. We're not against you. If you're an adulterer, we don't hate you. If you're a homosexual, matter of fact, we love you. We love you even more than the people you think love you. We care enough about you to tell you the truth. You can repent of your sin. I've counseled with people who've had abortions. I've counseled with people who've committed adultery. I've counseled with people who were in homosexual relationships. I've counseled with people who have been through everything. And I'm telling you, there's enough grace for you. There's enough grace to get us out of this mess and get us where we need to be. If we want this country to be great again, it can be great again. But it's only going to be by the turning of the people of God. What should scare us is not that there's people running for office who are all right with abortion. What should scare us is that 50% of this country thinks it's all right to commit murder. I'm not here to politic or to hobby horse or to fight. I'm just here to tell you that God's able. And we have a responsibility to do everything we can in our power to make this country great. I'm going to read you this and we'll close. In a quote by B.R. Lakin from 1968, he said this, It's the approval of God that makes a nation great. Not the genius of statesmen, not merely the form of government or the energy of its people, but the level of the national morals and the depth of national faith in God. My comment to that is making America great won't happen at the polls. It'll happen in our pulpits and our pews. And the polls will reflect what takes place there. I had a friend tell me something this week, and I liked it. He said, whenever I'm, I'm reading a promise of God in Scripture, I'll, I'll counsel somebody to put their name in it, make it personal. Like if somebody desires to be saved, I'll, I'll tell them like John 3.16. For God so loved Reuben Weaver that he gave his only begotten son that if Reuben Weaver believes on him he shall not perish but have everlasting life. I like that. So I'd like to borrow that suggestion and read you our text again. In Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. If thou wilt return America, saith the Lord, return unto me and if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight then shalt thou not remove. This means not be removed. And thou shalt swear, the Lord liveth. In truth, in judgment, and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him. Shall they glory. What a promise. Our country can't do anything that our church is not willing to do. Our church can't do anything that you're not willing to do. We want our country to be great again. It's going to mean our families need to be great again. It's going to mean that our church needs to be great again. And that means we're going to have to turn to God. I don't know what it's going to take. But I know that God's able. 
I know that God's able. And I know that he's faithful, and I know his will's going to be done, and I know that whatever happens Tuesday, which we probably won't find out about for five, six more weeks, God's going to be on his throne. And if one gets office, it's going to be easier to keep doing what we've been called to do. And if the other one gets office, it's going to be harder to do what we've been called to do. But let me say something without apology. We're going to keep doing what we've got to do. And God's going to be God, and we're going to be his people. He's going to be faithful. Get out and vote. But get on your knees and pick Jesus first. Stand with me. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you today for the privilege to open a Bible, be able to gather in your house and in your presence. And God, I pray this morning that you take this message, that you administer it to our hearts, you accomplish your will. Lord, I pray for our president. I thank you for his service. Lord, I thank you that you've accomplished what you have in these last four years. And I don't know that we've ever had a greater friend in the church that served in the White House, that gave us more liberty, cared more for what we did, and spoke more of our God. He's under attack, and I pray you bless him and you help him. And God, I pray that your will be done. I pray for Lord, those that oppose him, that you do a work in their heart. Bring a, bring a sweeping revival to our land that they might see Jesus before it's too late. God, I pray for our church, and I pray for our service, and I pray right now for every individual that we'd hear your word, that if we turn from our abominations and repent of our sin, the Bible says that we would swear that the Lord lives. And I pray today, God, that we'd have a revival in our hearts and our homes of a knowledge of a living God. Bless this altar as we pray for our nation, as we pray for this election, but God, also as we examine our own hearts and we do what you've told us to do, Lord, help us to receive your word with gladness, to humbly repent of our sin, and to do everything in our power to make this country great again. Bless this invitation. Your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You come if you need to come. I know the Lord will bless you for it. If you need to be saved, why don't you come and be saved today? Just let him have